Hello folks, today I wanted to talk about primers a little bit and whether you want to prime your home built or not. Um, I said before in my videos I'm definitely a fan of putting primer on. I think you need to be priming the inside of your aircraft. A lot of guys that are saying no, priming's not necessary. I honestly feel it is. I think it's for the time and amount of money you actually spend doing it, there's no reason not to on your internal surfaces, whether you're going to have a painted airplane, whether you're going to have a polished airplane. The inside mating surfaces need to be primed to protect from galvanic action between your steel structures and your aluminum skins or your aluminum substructures and um, just between your aluminum structures so that you don't get corrosion on them. 6061 aluminum, which is what the Zenith aircraft are built out of, is corrosion resistant to a certain degree. The deal with aluminum is it immediately oxidizes so it has a protective finish of oxidization on it. Different aluminums will have different amounts of corrosion resistance, just like any other steel or stainless steel or whatever it may be. They have varying degrees of, stain of corrosion resistance to them. 6061 is fairly resistant to corrosion, but um, it will corrode, you know, and the guys say, well, the manufacturers say you don't have to if you don't want to, and that's true, but there again, for the time and amount of money you spend doing it, it's, it's cheap insurance. Um, I've got a couple of pieces here that to me show signs of corrosion that that um, would be prevented by by some sort of corrosion protection or at least slowed down. This is a piece of 32,000 that's been here a oh, year, two years, I don't know, it was sitting in my scrap bin. And if you look in this corner, and actually you can see it on both sides, there's corrosion there. And something has spilled on it, something's gotten on it, I have no idea what it is. But that's corrosion on there just from sitting. So if that's sitting inside, why inside and fairly well protected what's your airplane going to do if it's sitting on the ramp for years at a time it's going to collect some moisture it's going to get crap spilled on it it's going to have bug guts or whatever stuck in the seams, and you're going to get corrosion um, this is a piece of the floor panel that i replaced that was in my video about storage damage this has got uh oh it's duplicolor self-etching primer it's a bomb cam and it's what i use to prime stuff with it's relatively inexpensive it's easy to do i don't have to clean up a gun and this was the floor, this is the, this would have been the bottom of the floor. And if you look in the middle of it, I'm sure we can see on this, hopefully the camera will pick it up, there's all these little marks, and this was the bottom. So whether it was just moisture that had settled on the bottom of that and collected, um, it's been stored inside, it's sat outside part of the time and everything, but that's the beginnings of corrosion. But if you look where it's primed around the outside edges, it's, there's no corrosion evident there. Um, this is the inside structure, and you know, look how crappy it looks there and everything, but this is that self-etching primer, and if it's applied properly, it'll do a good job. It'll add a, a layer of protection to your airplane. You know, you've got a whole bunch of different options for corrosion protection on them. And my background is I painted commercial vehicles for years and years. This has been this has been 30 years ago. So what I'm telling you is kind of old technology, but it's still applicable. There's new products out there that I'm not aware of that do an excellent job. As long as you're using something, I think it helps. You know, we started off years ago on aircraft structures, especially with zinc chromate. And it could either be sprayed on or brushed on. It was, you know, we've all, all seen the yellow zinc chromate that's been on the airplanes on the internal structures and stuff. And I think they did a green too, but you usually saw that yellowish zinc chromate primer it can be sprayed on it can be brushed on and it did a good job core locks one of the one of the ones that's been around it's water based the guys are brushing it on you mix it up and, and brush it on and i guess it dries clear i've not had any experience with core lock i don't know anything about it but some people are using it there again i, I think it's a viable option i still use the self-etching primers if they're applied properly it's going to stick uh, i watch a lot of youtube videos too about the guys building their stuff and they say, well, they, they haven't had any luck with it sticking. Well, just because it's a self-etching primer, you still have to prep your metal. Um, this is stuff, like I say, this has been on there two or three years. And if you scuff it, I can take a scotch brite. I don't know if the camera will see this, but we can, we can take it and we can scrub it down. And it will scuff off, but it still gives you a fair amount of protection. And it's not like it flakes off. I think where people are having problems is they're not prepping the surface underneath. Just because it's self-etching, it's still got to be able to get down to the aluminum to, to do its job. If you're seeing the lettering, if you sprayed self-etching primer on, and you can still see the lettering underneath off of the material, that, that's, that surface is not clean. My procedure for doing it is I will scotch bright everything off of where I want to prime. I will go back with lacquer thinner just on a paper towel, and I will wash all the lettering off and wash that down. And depending on how bad it is, I may scuff it again, and then I do a final clean with lacquer thinner. It doesn't take any time at all. And um, clean off all your Sharpie marks, clean off your the factory lettering that gives you the, all the information for the aluminum. 
and then spray yourself etching primer on and it's going to stick. That's, what's, that's what uh, the way these were prepped. Were prepped. If you can see that, that material underneath, um, if you can see Sharpie marks, if you can see manufacturer's lettering, it will flake off. You don't have any adhesion to it because it hasn't been cleaned. There's a surface of oil under, whether it's underneath the protective plastic, whether it's just um, oxidation that's built up on the aluminum itself and hasn't been cleaned off, that's going to that's gonna stop your self-etching primer from, from grabbing hold. So when you use self-etching primer or any other primer, your surface has got to be prepped. It's not just a spray it on and be done with it. You have to prep the metal underneath and it will adhere. The other option is, or one of the other options is etch an allodyne. And etching an allodyne, there again, that's kind of old technology. We've done that for years. We used to do that on trucks a lot. And we took it to the wash rack, wet down the surface, washed it down with a Luma prep, um, which was somebody's problem. It's the etch, etch process. It's an acid. Uh, keep it wet. You etch it. We went back with allodyne, did the same thing until it sheets off. And usually we used amber allodyne. They made it in clear and in amber. And washed it down the same way and rinsed it off. All allodyne is is a conversion coating. It is not a surface preparation itself. You still have to put something over the top of it. So we etched an allodyne. Then we went with, at that time, we were using an epoxy primer and then go back with whatever top coat we were using that was compatible with the, with the primer, whether it was, oh, we shot a lot of DuPont Durathane back then and a lot of Imron. So you still have to do something over your allodyne or it's, you know, you can't just allodyne and leave it at that. You need to be putting some sort of a primer over the top of that. It is a protective coating, but it is not actually a primer to, to that's going to hold up and do what you want it to do. Epoxy primer sealers are another big thing. And any of these sealers like this, usually if they're a primer sealer, they will still absorb moisture. So you can't prime them and just leave them without doing more prep after it's, after it's done because they are hydroscopic and will, will absorb moisture. So you still have to put a top coat over the top of them to seal them. So that's kind of my rant about primers and, and why you should prime. So I hope that at least helps you a little bit with, with what you want to do and helps you make an informed decision. There's a lot of new products out there. The best way to get that information is to go to your local paint shop. Go to your local auto body shop or auto body paint supplier and find one of the guys that knows what they're talking about that'll take the time to talk to you. A lot of times they'll be interested in what your project is too and they can offer you really good advice about what to use and what not to use. So, hope that helps you. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. If you like these, why comment on them, subscribe, give me a thumbs up and uh, we'll keep doing them.